Okay, this is Mr. Wedham again. I'm continuing our review on conic sections. Uh, this time I'm doing an ellipse. Um, this is not out of your review. This is one of your homework problems. You should have already done this problem. But I picked this one out because I thought it was uh, particularly indicative of something that you might see on the quiz tomorrow. Hint, hint. Okay, so what am I given? I'm given the foci. What do I always do? I always set this stuff up by plotting. I'm given that, and I'm given that. What do I know about ellipses? If I'm given the foci, I can use the midpoint formula, or since I've got a nice scale graph here, there's the center point. Okay. What does this also set up for me? This also sets up that this is the orientation this is the major axis of my ellipse. It's going to be a horizontal orientation. Now, since I'm given the foci, this distance from here to here is going to be 3. Okay. All right, now how am I going to get all the other information? Length of the major axis, 8. Now, the major axis is divided right in the middle by the center point. That means the major axis, 8 units, has to lay this way, which fixes the point of this vertex. Major axis, the other half has to go that way, fixes that vertex. All right, now that is really important because now that I have that vertex fixed, I know what my A value is, I know what my C value, and I know that A, B, and C all have a relationship. And for an ellipse, that relationship is this. It is the Pythagorean theorem, just with the letters kind of switched off in a way that doesn't make us very comfortable. But again, you have to have it memorized. Sorry about that. All right, so we're going to solve this for b squared and b. Okay, so b turns out to be plus minus root 7. Not a particularly nice number, but we can deal with it. Um, it's about 2.65 in our calculator. All right, so what that means is that's going to set my points of my major axis. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to come up root 7 units Okay, from here. So I add that to my y value, and then I'm going to go down root 7, so that's going to fix that data point here. Just leave it in uh, irrational. That's fine. As far as actually plotting it, uh, there is 1, 2, uh, point, there's a half, 0.65, blah, 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 close enough. Okay, so there's my graph. Now I've got a horizontal ellipse centered on 2, comma 1. That means my a squared value is going to be underneath my x variable, and it is the largest value. All right, so here's my general equation for a horizontal-oriented ellipse. I've already figured out what uh, a squared is. I've already figured out what b squared is. I can just substitute those values in, and there is my standard equation. How do I get that into a general? Well, not so much fun. I'd have to multiply both. Well, I had to foil everything out, but actually before I foiled everything out, I would multiply through by my least common multiple, and I think the least common multiple here is, I don't think we can get away from anything except for 16 times 7, and that's really a game. Let's not do that. All right, but that's what you would do. I'm not going to give you something that icky. All right, let's do, let's do another ellipse. Okay, what other kind of ellipse problem am I going to have? Oh, I'm going to have a general equation. Well, sort of general. To make it general, this guy needs to be over on this side. All right, but I want to graph the ellipse, which means I need my center, which means I need my major axis, minor axis, foci, vertice, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's kind of group some terms together. And I'm doing this because I'm setting up to complete the square. Now, I know over the course of your algebra training, various teachers have taught you to complete the square 
in various different ways. Me personally, I think it's much easier to complete the square when my coefficient of my x squared and y squared is 1. That's especially conducive here because I can easily factor a 4 away from my x's, factor a 9 away from my y's. So instead of completing the square on this garbage, because of the 4, it's not a simple tear and square. That 4 really messes up the tear square thing, which I don't like. Let's keep it simple. I right, here, I can do the tear square. Uh, tear negative 4 in half, negative 2, square it, positive 4. Tear this in half, negative 1, square it, positive 1. Then I have to add those to the other side. But, you say, well, it's a 4 and a 1. Where did this 9 and where did this come from? Remember, we factored that away. When we go messing around with anything in these parentheses, which we did, we added a 4 in the parentheses, we have to remember that ultimately we have to distribute this 4 to it. Same here, I ultimately have to distribute this 9. So if I add 4 to this side of the equation in these parentheses, I'm actually adding 16, which I have to add to this side. If I mess around and I add something inside these parentheses here, I have to multiply it by 9. So if I stick a 1 in here, I've actually stuck a 9 on this side of the equation. So I've stuck it on, on that side. All right, so let's factor. We get this. We know standard equation for an ellipse is equal to 1. So I divide everything by 36, and I reduce my fractions. Okay, now this is an ellipse. Where's my biggest denominator? There. That is my a squared. What is my orientation? My biggest denominator is underneath my x variable. It's got a horizontal orientation. What's left over has to do with the minor axis and b. I get my center from these offsets right here. So I've got a center, an a, and a b. Uh, I think I'm ready to go. So let's set all that stuff. There's my center. There's my a coordinates to get my vertexes. There's my b. B uh, guys to get my minor axis and their coordinates. Okay, what about the foci? How did I get that? Looks a little ugly. Okay, remember I've got this relationship. I know this guy, this guy. So C is plus or minus square root 5. is about 2 and a quarter for graphing purposes. 1, 2, yeah, it's kind of sloppy on the quarter. 1, to, yeah, it probably should be down there a little bit. Whatever. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Foci. Let's come over here. No, I did a good job there. One, two, and a quarter. There we go. One, two, and a quarter. Nope, did a good job. So I add that root five to the x coordinate. Got a horizontal orientation. Okay, and there's everything that we need to know on that ellipse problem. Okay, next video will be uh, hyperbola, and that'll wrap it up.